strong institutions, the beauty of American democracy. The world watched in utter amazement as a mob who has since been tagged domestic terrorists by the United States Congress and the media invaded the seat of American democracy, the Capitol. In the United States, the combination of the Houses of Rep and Senate is called the Congress. And our sitting president inciting the people against lawmakers, a democratic institution, and the seat of democracy in the nation is not a common spectacle in the 21st century. And so it has been described as a civil coup and christened an insurrection. How unprecedented. What I have admired relentlessly in the whole unfortunate saga is first, how almost everyone involved in the pre and post election matters in, in, in the US is placing nation over self. Secondly, the almost unanimous decision to prevent such an insurrection from happening again with actionable steps by the legislature. And thirdly, how everyone sees the development as a grave breach of national security and democratic integrity. How I wish Nigeria has strong institutions like the US. But what do we have? A national assembly that cannot summon the president. A national assembly that can't do anything about incompetent service chiefs and continual siege across the nation by criminals, bandits, and terrorists. A national assembly that wields no influence and did nothing about the fight of the youth against police brutality. A national assembly that lends itself to the whims and caprices of the executive arm. A national assembly that has lost its bite in the principle of the separation of powers. What I cannot understand is how Nigeria took what was convenient for them from the American presidential system of government and left certain beneficial and critical areas. For instance, the vice president in the US is a ceremony ahead of the US Senate and he presides over the certification of election results. Trump may have succeeded in thoroughly embarrassing the United States as the bastion of democracy globally. Yet we see the beauty of strong institutions. We see how the judiciary consistently stood up to the president and the Republican Party, although many of the judges were appointed by Trump. For the records, he appointed 53 judges to the federal appeals courts in four years, while former President Barack Obama appointed 55 in eight years. Trump has appointed roughly a quarter of all trial-level federal judges, which is why Judge Stephanus Babers, on behalf of a unanimous U.S. Third Circuit Court of Appeals panel, wrote, and I quote, free, fair elections are the lifeblood of a democracy, of our democracy, he said. Charges require specific allegations and then proof we have neither here. And then Jessica Levinson, a professor at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles, said, the Trump administration has been so efficient at confirming judges, but it's a real mistake to think that just because you appointed someone, they will rule in your favor in an election case. <laughs> How instructive. Trump's campaign, his allies, some Republican lawmakers and activists have filed more than 40 lawsuits in states and federal courts in order to overturn uh, Biden's victory in the no November 3 election. And I have wondered at how truly powerful the Speaker of the House in the US is. Nancy Pelosi has been so outstandingly assertive, leading the nation through its uh, present political turbulence and trying to chart a course and prevent a re reoccurrence. Now the question for me is why and how is Nigeria's own presidential system of governance so different? Why has it been so hard making our institutions strong and independent? People make institutions and not the other way. Right. So it is the people that will make these institutions. And um, it is the people in America, it's a convention. At some point, even people that blindly supported Trump over the years, including his vice president, Mike Pence, at some point now notice that look for his political broke future ranks. broke rank for his political future he would need mm -hmm. to break rank with you know 
the um, president who was heading to the wars of rain. And because they understand that they are the ones that will build those institutions. But here, yeah, what we first do, starting from us, the voters, we don't even ask, what are your antecedents? Oh, he's a good man. He's just surrounded by bad you, people. It's right now. They and share so rice. you collect money, you vote the wrong persons. And then you expect those wrong persons to uphold institutions? How? With a joke. You know, for me, I really <laughs> loved the fact that Mr. Trump finally over overdid things. You know, Trump is bigger and larger than life. He never imagined that he could do anything too much. When Twitter handled, handed him a life ban, then I knew that things are working. The truth is, this man thought he was acting. He's an egomaniac. He's a narcissist. And he really doesn't care for anyone apart from himself. And so at the end of the day, he wasn't working for the American people. Make America what great. America is actually a laughing stock in the, in the whole, like you said, bastion of democracy now being the worst ever. It's worse than even that uh, Idi Amin in those days when that he was same, a dictator. Same. Trump thought he could order things. He said he was putting pressure on his vice president to go to the Senate yeah. to, to change the results. How? And he, he said to, and he made a statement. I love that Pence. He's a very smart guy. Before he made, he said, I hope they read my statement prior to those um, people running into the Congress. He said, let them know what I have said. And he says, the, this is the free, freest and most voted elections in the history of the United States. And the people have spoken. And he cannot go and change things. And so Mr. Trump, seeing that everything that he did, including appointing all the judges yeah. that he could, even the last one that he rushed through, even a few days to elections, no, they, just, they threw out the case in the Supreme Court. So I'm very, very happy that democracy actually works in the United States. It's actually separation of powers, which, which is a joke. From the state level to the federal level, the, um, the House um, of Assembly people are uh, pandering to the governor so that they can get their allocations so, and their money. Is it the Senate? Um, they are waiting um, for the I, I, president. The House of Reps. Yeah. 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 You know, the so House of Reps. Uh, I mean, come on. This, we're, we're, has, we're talking. Sadie's we're talking. By the no, way, no, 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 to have you back you, on the show. Him, right? <laughs> you, you have not. You yeah, have not even, so I can't wait to hear you. You have not even heard. You have not heard me out. You should sit in the midst of I see that. You're in the safe corner. No, I was just. I was just going to say that. Um, it's interesting we're talking about American democracy. This is a very matured uh, democracy, it was century, century. Yeah. 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 Nigeria is an evolving democracy. We would have our challenge, uh, challenges. And like Libros said, our democracy is going to be strengthened by people, by us. Now, if we don't put our best people forward, you would not expect magic. So what it means is that we have to go back to the drawing board and ensure that we begin to advocate, do those little things to ensure that we put the right people, ensure the right people square lead us. Otherwise, we'll come back here 10 years, 20 exactly. years later and still be talking about this. And then when it's done, because I, I, the way I see Nigerians, is you just want a ready-made country to be thrown at you. You know, it's not going to happen. You have to build that country that you want. And if you don't participate, you'd not get it. So it's now, uh, mm. Chuka, I will Chuka, not do you reply to you now, say <laughs> you, but I is on the whole thing for the government. Just very quickly. Chuka. Just very quickly. I disagree with you, Seydu. It's okay. not that Nigerians want a ready-made good country. Right. It is that Nigerians have been disenfranchised. They've been Completely. emasculated and can no longer demand a good country without maybe losing their lives, uh, you know, and all that. You know, that is the You'll risks are too great. No to push for a decent country. So Most it's not that we just want it thrown to us. We just can't do anything. We're, we're powerless now. Most of those democracies were not, they fought. People lost their lives. Absolutely. You know, so it has to be persistent. If you want it, you can't sit back and say because they killed some, you know, you'd not push. It's a Let's not talk about Say the answers, no, no, we're we're not, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, so you know say, that. Say you have to, you, ha you can lose your life in certain cases because they're very serious. The, the condition in Nigeria is not serious enough to lose one's life. We should do better. The, uh, sorry, the, the government should do better to hand over some of this power back to the people. We don't have to, we don't have to die yet. This is not apartheid or any other very Chuka, serious. Are you sure that through? if we don't yes. die, first things will change? Are you sure? This looks like life and death to me from where Say I'm sitting. Say do, you have to come back <laughs> on the show I will. and I will reply you with another advocacy. No so, but we hope to hear from you on these topics as you advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, 
hashtag the advocate NG or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Next up is Seidu. Seidu, eh? I reply you looking into <laughs> you've been looking into a crystal and talking about Nigeria's financial future. Now I can't wait to hear him out of the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 